today, let me turn up my microphone gain because I, I was a little bit quiet on the last recording, so hopefully that'll be better. Um, all right, so we're going to start here in Jeremiah 31 because I left myself a note to start there. Um, and I was supposed to start in verse 8. I guess I'll start there, but wow. <laughs> it actually is quite interesting before that. Um, actually, let me start in 6. For there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the hills of Ephraim, okay, what did I say, right? Because Ephraim, well, we're going to talk about Ephraim right now. Upon the hills of Ephraim, oh no, not again. Okay, how was it I made this small? Because that's way too big. Okay, and let me go ahead and get rid of that. Okay, let's see if I got this figured out now. Okay, on the hills of Ephraim. Oh, it's too small. I'll make it a little bit bigger. Ugh, okay. Um, for there shall be a day that the watchmen upon the hills of Ephraim, that's much better, shall cry, Arise ye, and let us go up where? Up to Zion, unto Jehovah our God. Because he's going to dwell in the midst. This is going to be um, what the thing for which we're celebrating um, the, the fall festival, right? The, the Feast of Tabernacles. He's coming to Tabernacle with his people. For thus saith Jehovah, sing with gladness for Jacob and shout for the chief of the nations. Publish ye, praise ye, and say, O Yahweh, O Jehovah, save thy people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country. Okay, because where is Ephraim? He is in um, spiritual, um, oh my goodness, my brain's not working, spiritual Egypt, right? which I believe is the U.S., okay? So he's in Egypt in the north country. I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the uttermost parts of the earth and with them the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her that travaileth with child together. Okay, here's that woman that's travailing. A great company shall they return hither. Okay, they're going to return hither. Okay to the city of our God, right? To come together um, in uh, tabernacles, okay? So, they shall come with weeping and with supplications while I lead them. I will cause them to walk by rivers of water in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble, for I am, this is important, I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Okay, now remember when it talks about Ephraim, it's not just Ephraim, right? Remember what we read in um, um, Ezekiel chapter 37, that take one stick and write upon it for Joseph, Ephraim, right? And um, the house of Israel, his companions. So it's not just Ephraim, it's Ephraim and all of those that are with him, all right? So this is the nation that's born in a day. This is what we're we're going to discover here. This is Ephraim. Okay. Now, so the next place we're going to go um, is, do we go to Zechariah first or Revelation 12? I have Revelation 12 next, but I think I want to go to Zechariah next. Anyway, we'll see. And a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet, and on her head a crown of twelve stars. Of course, twelve stars, right? The twelve tribes, um, right? Um, twelve stars, right? Twelve tribes of Israel. She was pregnant. Here's that, um, the woman in labor that we're constantly seeing, and was crying out in birth pains and the agony of giving birth. Oh, English Standard Version. I don't know if I've ever read this version before. And another sign appeared. Okay, so we have two signs. So first we had the sign of the woman who wants to give birth. Another sign appeared in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon with seven heads and ten horns, and on his head seven diadems. Sometimes this says seven crowns. His tail swept down a third of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman who was about to give birth, so that when she bore her child, he might devour it. 
She gave birth to a male child, one who is to rule. Now this is really important. It's a male child that is to rule all the nations with a rod of iron, but her child was caught up to God, this is important too, and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, uh -huh, where she has a place prepared, whoops, where she has a place prepared by God, in which she is to be nourished 1,260 days. All right, let's go ahead and break this down. And we're going to break it down by using the book of Zechariah. It's fascinating um, the correlations between what I'm about to read you and this um, Revelation 12. So Zechariah chapter 3. All right, let's just start from the beginning. I don't know why I'm all the way down there. Then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord. We're going to see in just a minute that the angel of the Lord is Yehusha HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, okay? And Satan standing at the right hand to oppose him. Now, I'm going to show you that this is an exact parallel, exact parallel to Revelation 12, okay? But before we even go there, who is Joshua? Now, historically, this is a Joshua that um, came back after the Babylonian captivity, right? which is kind of interesting too, and I'll take you there in a second. But um, Joshua, the original Joshua, right, son of Nun, um, he, according to the Old Testament, was an Ephraimite. And he took over after the death of Moses. And why did he take over? Because Ephraim was the birthright tribe, okay? So they were the leading tribe. And then later, um, at the time of King David, right at the time of the kings, then um, Judah took over and began to rule. But originally it was Ephraim, okay? And it was through Joshua the Ephraimite. Just a minute, I'll look that up so I can show you. Um, okay, here we are in Numbers chapter 13. Notice it has the lists of um, the spies, um, one from each tribe. And from the tribe of Ephraim, we have Oshea. Oh, golly, it did it again. Oh, it's a conspiracy. Oshea. Um, there we go. Oshea, the son of Nun, right? The interesting thing is that Moses actually... Um, changed Oshea's name to um, Yehoshua, Yehoshua, um, which means Yah saves or Yah is our salvation. So we know that Jesus is our high priest. So this is really interesting that Joshua here is being called a high priest. Um, I think that it's in the similitude of Jesus. Um, acting as his servant, right? Uh, becoming like him. Um, and of course, Joshua, Yehoshua, um, means um, God saves, as we just mentioned, right? So we have a type and shadow of the Savior, right? The high priest standing before the angel of the Lord, okay? And the angel of the Lord, we know who he is, because as we come down here, it says, um, then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him, saying, take away the filthy garments from him, from Joshua. And to him, he said, see, I have removed your iniquity from you, and I will clothe you with rich robes. Well, the only, the only person who can remove iniquity is Yehushua is um, Yeshua. It's Jesus Christ. That's the, that's that's the only one with that authority. So this has to be the angel of the Lord here has to be Jesus Christ. So Joshua the high priest is standing before Yehushua Hamashiach, um, Yeshua Hamashiach, Jesus Christ, and Satan is standing at his right hand to oppose him. Now let me just show you. Um, I, I want you to see this. I have to clean this as I go. Um, I want you to see this over here in Revelation 12. So we're going to come down a little further where we haven't read yet. Um, and it says, let me just find it really quickly. Okay. 
Hang on, let me just find it really quickly. Okay, it's right here. Now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ have come for the accuser of our brothers or the accuser of the brethren has been thrown down who accuses them day and night before our God. Okay, so here he is. This is the dragon. This is Satan. Okay, and he is standing there before our God accusing accusing the brethren, right? Constantly. What's happening here? We have, then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him, to accuse him. Do you see that? Isn't that fascinating? Same story. And Yahweh said to Satan, Yahweh rebuke you, Satan. Okay. Yahweh, who has chosen Jerusalem, rebuke you. And then he says, is, not, is this not a brand plucked from the fire? I'm going to talk to you about what that is, but look at that. So then when he's standing there to accuse Joshua the high priest, and I'm going to tell you, Joshua the high priest is not just Joshua. This is a singular person representing, in my opinion, the 144,000. Okay, um, and I think you're going to see this clearly. This is the baby that's born. This is Ephraim, the firstborn that we just read here in Jeremiah when it says, um, for I am a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. All right. What is the woman doing in Revelation 12? She is in labor. She is um uh, you know what, can I can I can change this to either KJV or NKJV? Because I just don't like the sound of that other one. It just sounds weird to me. Anyway, now a great sign appeared in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet. And then, then being with child, she cried out in labor, in pain to give birth, in pain to be delivered, right? There you are, all right? Same, same situation, right? Here we are, and Ephraim is my firstborn. So somebody has given birth, and the Revelation 12 tells us who was given birth to, right? And her child, let's see, she bore what? A male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to God in his throne. We're about to read about that right here in Zechariah. So let's keep going. So we have Joshua, the high priest, he's standing before the Lord. Satan's is there accusing him. And um, then, um, oh, the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Okay, then, then, then Satan is cast down, right? That's what I was going to show you here. It's the same exact story, right? Um, let me go down. Um, so the great dragon was cast out. The old serpent, okay, the Lord rebuke you is what he said to Satan when he was there trying to accuse the brethren, called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. All right. I, I think that's exactly what's happening here. Okay. He says the Lord rebuke you, Satan. All right. So Satan is cast down, right? Because he has chosen Jerusalem. Okay, and and he has the right to do that because this is he's standing before Yehusha HaMashiach, who has the right to forgive sins, to cleanse us completely from from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. As a matter of fact, let's go there. Hang on. Right. So this is Isaiah chapter one, when it tells us the condition of of Israel. It says, um, hear, O heavens, and give ear, O her earth, for the Lord has spoken. I've nourished and brought up children. Yes, he has nourished us. We have the word, right? Um, but even so, what happened? They rebelled against me. The ox knows his owner, and the ass his master's crib, right? But Israel does not know. My people do doth not consider a sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors, 
Okay, this is where we are. We have provoked him to anger. We just keep going backwards. Here, he continues to explain how he sees us. He says, um, the whole head is sick, the whole heart is faint. From the sole of the foot, even unto the head, there's no soundness in it, but wounds and bruises and putrefying sores. They've not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. So nothing's been done to treat this patient that is covered in sores from head to toe. That is our situation. Because of that, our cities are going to be burned with fire and our land, um, our, our land, strangers will devour it in our presence and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers this is talking about the daughter of zion okay these are the people that we're talking about this is the condition that we're in but what does he say to us he says let's see okay so he's going through and he's talking more about all the terrible things that we're doing um okay and then he says, where did it go? Come now, verse 18, come now and let us reason together, saith Yahweh. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you, are if you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Praise Yah. And that's what we want to be. This is the condition that we have to come to. And he's showing us that if we are willing, if we're willing to do the weightier matters of the law, as he says in Matthew 23. As a matter of fact, I have that one up. If we're willing to obey the weightier matters of the law, um, which is... Let me just find that real quick. It's back up here. Yeah. For you pay the tithe of mint and anise and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice and mercy and faith. So giving every man according to his due, right? Dealing out justice mercy being merciful you know he says that that though if we forgive others then he will forgive us right and having faith in Yahushua HaMashiach the weightier matters of the law right oh without leaving the other things undone right so we still have to keep all of his commandments but having justice and mercy and faith absolutely have to happen right anyway so let's go back here where were we i don't even remember where we were i'm, I'm running all over the place here all right let's go back to zechariah chapter 3 i'm having a hard time staying focused today um the lord rebuke you satan the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? I want to come back to that phrase in a minute. Now, Joshua was clothed with filthy garments. Okay, that's what we were just talking about. How filthy we are, right? And was standing before the angel. Okay, the angel, remember, we decided was Yehusha HaMashiach. Then he answered and spoke to those who stood before him saying, take away the filthy garments from him, right? Because um, the white garments are the righteous acts of the saints that's in the book of revelation okay this is revelation chapter 19 starting in verse 7 let us rejoice and be glad and give him the glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready lest we don't understand who we're talking about in zechariah um this is the bride Okay, this is this is the the hundred and forty four thousand. These are these are the first ones. This is the firstborn, right? She was what happened? She was given clothing of fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen she wears is the righteous acts of the saints. And who justifies us and makes us righteous? Yehusha Hamashiach. And what is he doing right now? He's giving. Um, the high priest, Joshua, what? It says, take away the filthy garments from him. And to him, he said, see, I have removed your iniquity from you and I will clothe you with rich robes. 
It's this exact same story, guys. And I said, let them put a clean turban on his head. Putting putting um, a head dressing on someone is giving them authority. This is the action of giving these people authority, okay? This is Philadelphia. Hang on a second. Okay, here's the faithful church and to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, right? And I'm just going to come all the way down here. Because you have kept my command to persevere, okay? And actually, when we come over here to Zechariah, in just a minute, it's going to say, if you walk in my ways and if you keep my command, all right? Do you see how all this language just lines up so beautifully? Let's go back over here. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Behold, I am coming quickly. Hold fast what you have, that no one may take your crown, right? Headdressing. What was just put on Zechariah? What was just put on Zechariah? Let them put a clean turban on his head, his crown, his headdressing. This is the same story guys over and over but it's richer when you find it in all these different places because the pieces start to come together and the picture just unfolds so beautifully he who overcomes I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go out no more I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God Jerusalem right the new Jerusalem Okay, the, the beautiful sanctified Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God. Now, look, this, these that come out of heaven from his God, it's the 144,000. I'm going to show that to you right here in Zechariah. This is amazing. All right. And I will write on him my new name. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. Let's go back here to Zechariah and continue this story. So they put a clean turban on his head and they put the clothes on him. And the angel of the Lord stood by. Yehusha HaMashiach stood by. So then we're going to have the branch. So um, we've talked about the high priest already. What did I say we were going to talk about? Let me get my notes. Um, the sign. Okay. The sign in heaven. The Revelation 12 sign. Isn't that what it said right here? It said the two great signs appeared in heaven, a woman about to give birth. And then also the other sign was this dragon that was going to try to devour her. But look at this. She bore a child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was what? Caught up to God and his throne. Isn't that what we just read in Revelation 3, right? It says, um, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. Let's see, where was I? Um, right. Um, and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven because he's been caught up to heaven, all right, this is the same story. He's been caught up to God and his throne. And then he comes down out of heaven to rule the nations with a rod of iron. It's the same story, but first he has to be empowered. So the angel of the Lord admonished Joshua saying, thus says Yahweh of hosts, if you will walk in my ways and if you will keep my command, then you shall also, what? Judge my house, rule them with a rod of iron and likewise have charge of my courts. I will give you places to walk among these who stand here. You see, there are already some that have received these crowns, right? That have become high priests after the order of the great high priest, which is Yehusha HaMashiach. Okay. This is a group of people among these who stand here. All right. Here, O Joshua, the high priest, you and your companions who sit before you. This Joshua is not just one person, okay? This is a group of people. This is the 144,000. So what does it say? For you are, they are a wondrous sign. This is the second Revelation 12 sign. 
and another sign appeared in heaven, right? And what was part of that sign? She bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron, and her child was caught up to his throne, to God in his throne. Okay, and then after that happened, then the woman fled into the wilderness where she had a place prepared by God. What is this place? First of all, the woman who gave birth to the child were those who believed or at least professed to believe in Yehusha HaMashiach. But there was this subgroup that proved themselves righteous. What did it say? They persevered, right? Isn't that what it said? Um, let's see. It was right here. Um, because you have kept my command to persevere. I will keep you from the hour of trial, which will come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth because the rest of, um, the house of Jacob are not yet ready to, um, to enter into the new Jerusalem, to enter into the rest of Yahweh, right? The rest of Yehusha HaMashiach. They're not ready, right? Um, but this little subgroup that's being called Ephraim in the book of Jeremiah, this subgroup is ready and they are a wondrous sign. And they are calling, they're calling this subgroup here in Zechariah, Joshua. Okay, behold, I am bringing forth my servant, the branch. Oh, <laughs> the branch. This is beautiful. What did we just see? Let me pull it up. Okay, so remember we had this great eagle, um, long winged, full of feathers, which had diverse colors, right? Who came unto Lebanon and took the highest branch of the cedar. Okay, now Lebanon is the place where God's people dwell. Like if we look here in Psalm 92 and 12, the righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. It is, it is beautiful language. Lebanon means white, right? So these are the great cedar trees that grow on the white mountain, right? Or you could also say on Mount Zion, all right. So this is wherever his people, those that he accepts as his people are dwelling. All right. And so um, coming back over here to Ezekiel 17, it says, um, so this um, eagle that had diverse colors, um, which is Babylon, right? We find out later, came unto Lebanon and took the highest branch of the cedar. And what did he do with it? He cropped off the top of his young twigs and carried it into a land of traffic. He set up, set it up in a city of merchants, right? He also took the seed of the land and planted it in a fruitful field. He placed it by great waters and set it as a willow tree, all right? So like I've told you before, I think this land of merchants um, is Great Britain. I don't know if you know this, but um, Great Britain had the largest number of merchant ships in the world all the way up until World War, after World War II. Um, and then here, you know, the seed of the land right? He planted in a fruitful field. I believe that when the scriptures are talking about a fruitful field, they're talking about the United States, where, of course, many from Great Britain um, settled later, right? So let's just keep going. And it grew and became a spreading vine. So, and then we'll just come on down here. Now, when it explains what this means, it explains to us that there was a second eagle. And the second eagle is um, Yehusha HaMashiach. And it says, thus saith um, Adonai Yahweh. I, I'm sorry, I said Yehusha HaMashiach and I meant to say Yahweh, excuse me. Thus saith Adonai Yahweh. I will also take of the highest branch of the high cedar, right? So he's, he's also going to take from the same group of people, okay? And I will set it. I will crop off the top of his young twigs a tender one, 
Okay. And this goes along with Revelation, I'm sorry, not Revelation chapter one, Isaiah chapter one. I don't know if I still have that open, but um, in Isaiah chapter one, it says to the daughter of Zion, if I had not left you a very small remnant, you would have been like unto Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay. So a uh, tender one, a very small group, right? And I will plant it upon a high mountain. Okay. Lebanon. Okay. Mount Zion and eminent. Okay. This is the branch. This is the branch that we're talking about. The highest branch of the high cedar. This is the branch. This is the same group of people. We keep talking about the same group of people over and over and over in this revelation. And so I'm just trying to help you see all of these key phrases and key words and see how they come together. Right? So I am bringing for behold, I am bringing forth, I'm back in Zechariah 3, on verse 8, my servant, the branch. For behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua. Who is the stone? The stone, of course, is Yehusha HaMashiach, right? Um, upon the stone are seven eyes, the seven spirits, right? That it talks about in Revelation that go forth throughout the whole earth, right? And see everything. Behold, I will engrave its inscription right? What did he tell us? What did he tell us right over here in Revelation uh, chapter 3? It says, um, I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem. And I will write on him my new name. Okay, same story. Let me go back over here. Um, to Zechariah, okay? Behold, I will engrave its inscription, says Yahweh of hosts, Yahweh Sabaoth, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. This is the nation born in a day, okay? They're going to be clothed in white. They're going to receive their head dressing, their crowns, right? Um, and then they are going to rule. Um, they're going to, to rule under Jesus Christ, right? Um, under his authority. And that day, so we know this is the latter days. In that day, there's that phrase, says Yahweh of hosts, everyone will invite his neighbor, what? Under his vine and under his fig tree. Here it is, another witness. This is Micah chapter four. Oh, we'll start in verse one. In the last days, so there's your time period. Okay, this is right now. The mountain of the house of Yahweh, Lebanon, will be established as the chief of the mountains. Okay, it'll be the greatest of all of the nations, right? It will be raised above the hills and the peoples, the peoples will stream to it, right? Because first we have the establishment of the New Jerusalem, and then just like I told you in the last video, then they go out and they gather the righteous from the four quarters of the earth, right? These are those that had to go through the tribulations when they got poured out, but who are um, humbling themselves and washing themselves white and being brought into the New Jerusalem. Now, the other thing that I wanted to make a point about, I got to come back to here because I want to read this too, but I don't want to forget to say this while I'm still thinking. There is a reason why this is Joshua, why this is, um, remember Joshua the Ephraimite. There is a reason why in Jeremiah it says, um, yeah, they will come together a great company, right? But Ephraim, I am a father to Israel and Ephraim is my firstborn. There is a reason why it says that because this is a repeat of exactly what happened. Um, remember, we read in Hosea that Ephraim is back in Egypt. And of course, he's back in Egypt because he was backsliding and all of that kind of stuff. But why else is he in Egypt? He's in Egypt because we're repeating the story. Just as Joseph went into Egypt and rose to prominence and then was able to prepare a place of safety for his brothers to come to um, when there was famine throughout the land in order to save them, right? And that place was Goshen. The exact same story is about to repeat. Those that are called Ephraim and his fellows, it will be all 12 tribes that are going to be represented, right? But, but this is this is the symbolism of the story, right? So 
the same thing is going to happen. So this 144,000, which are called Joshua, which, which are called Ephraim, which are the firstborn, right? They are going to um, go up to the throne of God. They are going to be empowered. They are going to be second only in power at that point to Yehusha HaMashiach. And then they are going to be sent down to set in order the kingdom of God on the earth they, to establish the new Jerusalem, Goshen, the new Goshen, where then all of the righteous will then gather. As a matter of fact, let's go back. Um, it says it very, I still got to read Micah though. I'm so sorry, guys. It's just that the way this works is it's like this tapestry that just weaves together and you have to go all over the place. At least that's what my mind does in order to put it together. So um, it's really interesting. So it says, thus saith um, Adonai Yahweh, I will also take of the highest branch of the high cedar, high priest, right? Remember Joshua, the high priest, and will set it. I will crop off from the top of his young twigs, a tender one, and will plant it upon a high mountain and imminent in the mountain of the height of Israel. Will I plant it? And it shall bring forth boughs and bear fruit. Praise Yah. We're finally going to bear fruit. We're not going to any longer be that um, fig tree that he cursed because he came upon it and there was no fruit. And be a goodly cedar. And under it shall dwell what? All fowl of every wing in the shadow of the branches thereof shall they dwell. Okay, everybody's going to come and they're going to dwell under, right, under this 144,000, under Joshua, who has been given the rod of iron, right, the ability to um, to uh, judge righteous judgment, you know, in the similitude of Yehusha HaMashiach under his direction and his authority. Hang on just a second. Lest we think that in all of this talking of Ephraim and Joseph and um, and Judah and the 12 tribes, that God is a respecter of persons, okay? What we just read over here in Ezekiel 17 is that he's going to raise up this goodly cedar, right? And under it shall dwell all fowl of every wing. In the shadow of the branches thereof shall they dwell. And all of the trees of the field shall know that I, Yahweh, have brought down the high tree, have exalted the low tree, have dried up the green tree, and have made the dry tree to flourish. Dry tree. This is really interesting. I, Yahweh, have spoken and have done it. Okay. All all fowl of every wing, okay, into the shadow of this tree. So what does it say here? Let, this is Isaiah chapter 56. Let no foreigner who has joined himself to Yahweh say, Yahweh will utterly exclude me from his people. No, he will not. Like I said, Israel is, or I don't know if I've said this, but Israel is made up of the faithful believers it is not so much about the blood as it is about the condition of the heart. Do we have a heart for Yehusha HaMashiach? Let's just go ahead and read. It says, let no foreigner who has joined himself to Yahweh say, Yahweh will utterly exclude me from his people. And let the eunuch not say, I am but a dry tree, right? For this is what Yahweh says. To the eunuchs who keep my Sabbaths and choose what pleases me and holds fast to my covenant, right? Hold fast, right? Um, he who perseveres. I will give them in my house and within my walls a memorial and a name better than that of sons and daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that will not be cut off. Isn't that exactly what he said over here in Revelation chapter 3? He said, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God. He shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God, the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, and I will write on him my new name. Praise Yah. And I will give him an everlasting name that will not be cut off. 
and the foreigners who join themselves to Yahweh to minister to him, to love the name of Yahweh and to be his servants and who keep the Sabbath without profaning it and who hold fast to my covenant, I will bring them to where to my holy mountain to Zion to the new Jerusalem and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be accepted on my altar for my house will be called a house of prayer for all nations. Praise Yah. So in all of this talking about, I'm sorry, I keep hitting the microphone because I move my hands a lot when I'm, when I talk. Um, anyway, in all of this, um, talking, like I said, about all of the different tribes and so on and so forth. Um, it's, it's really who are we inside that matters. That's how we become the children. That is how we become um, worthy to be in the 144,000 because what's going to happen? He's going to graft in those branches in to the original olive tree, which is Yehusha HaMashiach. And they become just as um, just as much a part of that original tree as the original branches. And as a matter of fact, the original branches, if they are, if they are wicked, they're going to be cut off and cast into the fire. Okay. You, it's not enough to have Abraham as your father. What's blood that's running in your veins is not sufficient. Okay. It is the spirit that's running throughout your, throughout your, um, your body. Are you in the, are you, uh, walking in the spirit of truth and righteousness? Or are you walking in the spirit of the wicked one? Whose child are you? Whose child are you really? That's what matters. So before I forget, I want to come back here to Zechariah chapter 3. There was a statement that was made here that I wanted to make sure everyone picked up on. Okay, so we're going to go back to the beginning. Then he showed me Joshua, the high priest, standing before Yahweh, right? Before, well, no, excuse me, standing before the angel of the Lord, Yehusha Mashiach, and Satan standing at his right hand to oppose him. And Yahweh said to Satan, Yahweh rebuke you, Satan. Um, Yahweh who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. And then what did he say? Is this not a brand plucked from the fire? So I went and looked up what a fire brand is. What a firebrand is, is it is uh, when you grab a stick out of the fire that is lit on fire, that's burning, and you use it to start a fire somewhere else. So Joshua, his job is to light the whole world on fire for Yehusha HaMashiach. Praise Yah. Isn't that a beautiful thing? I just wanted to make sure that, that I showed you that, that beautiful little statement. I just wanted to finish up here by reading um, a little bit more of the Revelation 12 part of the saga because um, there's a beautiful message that's coming up here and I want to make sure that we make the connection. Um, and war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them, right? Um, Yahweh rebuke you is the way that it had stated in Zechariah chapter three. So the great dragon was cast out the serpent of old called the devil and Satan who deceives the whole world he was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the okay of course they've come because remember what did we just find out Zechariah uh, in Zechariah um, Joshua and those with him um, have been given clean robes and a clean turban, which is, of course, exactly what we see. I don't know if I still have that open in Revelation 19. This is the woman, right? Um, for the marriage of the lamb has come and his bride has made herself ready. She was given clothing of fine linen, bright and pure. For the fine linen she wears is the righteous acts of the saints, right? The angel, let's see, then the angel told me to write, blessed are those who are invited to the marriage supper of the lamb. And he said to me, these are the true words of God. All right. So blessed are those that are invited to the wedding supper of the lamb. This is 144,000. This is Joshua, the high priest. Okay. This is Ephraim, the firstborn child. This is the child that the woman gives birth to. Now finishing up in Revelation chapter 12. 
and the power of his Christ have come, right? Because he was given, what was Joshua given? He was given, um, let's see. Then you shall also judge my house and likewise have charge of my courts, right? Or I believe, wasn't it um, Revelation that says, let's see. No, it's not Revelation. Hang on a second. Right, so just like it said here in Revelation 12, she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. Okay, it's just the same story over and over. So coming back to verse 10, we're going to finish this up. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come for the accusing, accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by what? The blood of the lamb, right? They finally were given, they, they reasoned with the Lord. And so um, their sins, though they were as scarlet, were made white as wool, right? They were given the white garments. And by the word of their testimony, their testimony in Yahushua HaMashiach, and they did not love their lives to the death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea, for the devil has come down to you, having great wrath, because he knows he has but a short time. Now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. Okay, but that's okay because this male child, this is the birth of the nation in a day. This is the new Jerusalem and the places of safety has been prepared now for those who are part of the woman. And as they cleanse themselves and become white in the blood of Yahushua HaMashiach, then they are then brought into the new Jerusalem, the place of safety. But the woman was given what? Two wings of a great eagle. Remember the great eagle, the last great eagle in the book of um, Ezekiel chapter 17 was um, Yahweh right? He was the one that plucked the tendermost branch and took it and planted it right on Mount Zion, right? In the mountains of Israel. So um, there it is. That is, that is the eagle. Okay. And that is where they're going is to the, the, the latter day Goshen, which is the new Jerusalem. Okay. Which has been prepared um, by Yahushua HaMashiach. Um, through his servants, who are the 144,000, who is the child that has just been born, who is Joshua the high priest, who is Ephraim the firstborn son, all the same, same event, just in different language, okay? That she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. Exactly the thing that happened with them. They went into Egypt where they were nourished for a time, right? And then they came out of Egypt and went to the promised land, which is exactly what we read in Jeremiah chapter 3, remember, where it said that Judah and Ephraim would come together and then they would go out from the land of the north to the land um, that was given to their forefathers. Same story all throughout. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. These are, I believe, where all of the nations come against Jerusalem, right? But the earth helped the woman and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed up the flood with the dragon. Um, I'm sorry, swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of his mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yehusha HaMashiach. Okay, I believe that that is what they're talking about at this point is that um, the testimony of Yehusha HaMashiach is going to eventually cover the entire earth. And so he knows that he cannot 
um, overcome those that are in the New Jerusalem. This had, those five cities of righteousness in Egypt have been established. He has tried to come against them and he cannot overcome them. And so now as the, as the testimony of Yehusha HaMashiach begins to cover the world, he's now going to go and try to destroy them before they become gathered in. It's just an amazing story, isn't it? One last thing that I wanted to show you. So over here in Zechariah 3, at the very end, I want to show you another um, tie-in to the story in another uh, location, this time in Micah. It says, In that day, says Yahweh of hosts, I'm in verse 10 of Zechariah 3, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. Look at this language here in Micah 4. And the last days, the mountain of the house of Yahweh will be established as the chief of the mountains. It will be raised above the hills and the peoples will stream to it. Absolutely, they will. That's exactly what we've been reading. And many nations will come and say, come, let us go up to the mountain of Yahweh, to the house of um, the God of Jacob, right? This, this is Jacob who has now struggled and become Israel. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths because the knowledge of, of, of Yahweh and Yehusha HaMashiach is going to cover the earth, right? And all these many nations are going to start coming up. For the law will go forth from Zion and the word of Yahweh from Jerusalem. Then he will judge between many peoples and arbitrate for strong nations far and wide. Then they will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will no longer take up sword against nation, nor will they train any more for war. And each man will sit, look at this, under his own vine and under his own fig tree with no one to frighten him. For the mouth of Yahweh of hosts has spoken. Though each of the peoples may walk in the name of his God, yet we will walk in the name of Yahweh, our Elohim, forever and ever. Praise Yah. So there it is. Each man will sit under his own vine and under his own fig tree. Just like it says here in Zechariah, everyone will invite his neighbor under his vine and under his fig tree. The knowledge of Yahweh will cover the earth. All will be invited to know him. I think that's going to be it for today. Uh, I can't wait for the next study. I don't know about you, but there's so much to do. Anyway, God bless.